Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? So Kevin Roberts, one of our newest partners here at the Barbarian Hour, Jared, he is selling Resolite mats. He's uh, gunning to be their top salesman of the year for Resolite out of Pennsylvania. And uh, he's out of the Pacific Northwest, out in North Idaho, uh, Eastern Washington. And he seems to be gaining momentum, and we've been working with him a lot. Uh, I'll be out there for camps later on at his new facility, the Dungeon. You've been working with him for years, right? Yeah, I've been working for, for Kevin for years. And then that was how Ian ended up at Oregon State with uh, Coach Kevin Roberts. So you can check out Coach Roberts at robertswrestling.com. Coach Chris Ayers of the Princeton Tigers is on the Barbarian Hour tonight. Coach Ayers is an NCAA All-American for the Lehigh Mountain Hawks, where he was assistant coach. And then he, this is, are you, have you been at Princeton for 11 years now? 12 years? Try, try 15. Is it 15 years? 15 years. Oh my goodness. And you guys had uh, NCAA finalist in 2019, Pat Glory, or uh, not, not NCAA finalist. You had Pat Glory took third in 2019, right? Yeah. We had three All-Americans that year. Uh, Rocky was third. And then uh, Brucky was third. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I lose track of this stuff. And then mm. the year that, you know, the COVID year, we had four All-Americans. We were sitting pretty good, but, um, you know, it got canceled. So it happens, right? <laughs> 15 years. I I just remember bringing uh, Drew yep. Stone and Harrison Hightower and Ian Miller over yep. to your, uh, and Brad Wookie, who ended up at Penn. Yep. The only guy who could have got in, I think. Right. <laughs> Um, we, we came over for a visit. We did a visit at Princeton. It was awesome. Yeah. And uh, they got to see the room. We got to see, was it J- is Jadwin, Jadwin yeah. behind you? Jadwin, that's behind me, yep. Yeah. So Jadwin, we got to go there, which Jadwin's a cool, really cool arena. One of the most unique arenas in the world, obviously. There's nothing like that place. And uh, that's funny that you mentioned that. I was thinking about that a lot today because I knew I was going to get on this interview. And uh, you were one of the first people that that interviewed me when I took over at Princeton. So it's kind of funny, you know, 15 years later, here we are again. Oh my God. What? Dude, that was 2008 or nine. What, what do you think? I is think it was really seven, good. maybe. Was it, was it eight? You think? That was eight. I think it was your first was, year. You'd only been my, there a year. I was, my first year was six, seven. Was it six, yeah. seven? So it was, it was eight then. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so. Andy Lauser was there. <laughs> that's right. And then Joe. Was it Joe? Yep, Jamison, the, that's right. Yep. Right. That's it. That was he's it. the head coach at well, I can't even say the name of it. Or Sinus. Or Sinus. So he's yeah. the, he's the head coach at Or Sinus. Andy is at Davidson. Head coach at Davidson, which is pretty cool, legacy wise, having you know coaches out there who were coaching here too. Andy's um, cool. Andy's yeah. a real cool guy. They've they've been trained well in terms of what we went through. So they're 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 very uh, they, they have tough skin when it comes to rebuilding and building a program because. Uh, I don't know how it was pretty bad in those early years. So, right, wasn't it like two years or it was? They were dropped. They were dropped at one point. But for you, I'm saying for Princeton, right? When you took over, yeah. it was a- yeah. So when I took over, it might have been three years without a win. It was at least two years without a win. Um, two years without an NCAA qualifier. Uh, my first year was really crazy. So I was at Lehigh, and uh, and we won Easterns, and we had won Easterns every year as an assistant. We placed in the top ten. So I come to Princeton and at EIWAs, we went 0 and 20. So basically everyone went 0 and 2. I can remember sitting in the stands and just being like, man, you know, this is, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's going to take a lot longer time. And those kids are great too. I mean, honestly, I, I look back and, and sometimes, you know, you talk about those hard years, but they were tough, man. I mean, for those guys to stick it out and, and what I, we kind of put them through a, a pretty hard schedule too. Cause I was always into, Hey, hey here's what D one wrestling looks like. We got to get used to this. And so those kids were really tough to stick it out and keep us going. And they were really the foundation for where we are now, but man, that was, 
that was tough going from the best team in the EIWA to be an 0 and 20. That is wild. When I think yeah. about it, I, I listen, I think about it in the sense of like, like John Clark at sacred heart. Yeah. It's really similar to how he started. It took it. I think it took him a little bit longer than it took you maybe a year longer, but man, once you got that. it going your direction though, <laughs> right. And they yeah. had, they had two qualifiers this year. None of the Ivies competed in the IWA. The six Ivies did not compete in the IWA because of COVID. And then, you know, they had two national qualifiers at sacred heart. So you know what it's like to build from the ground up. Like you're feeling that guy's pain a lot and you, you know, he's getting some buy-in from his administration and uh, it's good to see those guys succeed. And obviously when everybody wins and is sending guys to the NCAs, it's good for everybody. Right. Yeah. I, I, I texted him because it was, it was pretty cool. So, you know, I had been through what he had been through and he actually was the assistant at Lehigh after me. So we have a little bit of a connection there. Um, and, you know, I was watching his guys qualify their, their matches to get into the NCAs. I, I didn't even watch the kid wrestle. I wasn't watching the kids wrestle. I was watching John in the corner because it was so neat to kind of get pulled back to those moments when, you know, I remember when we had our first NCA qualifier and, and, you know, and, and what a huge milestone that is for a program to do something like that, like Sacred Heart. So I, I texted him right away and said, you know, congrats. That's amazing. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely an underdog guy, just considering where, where we came from. So I, you know, I, I'm always cheering for him and then he's ahead of everyone else in relation to women's wrestling too. So he's, uh, he's doing some really cool things. I really appreciate what he's done in the conference and, and his, that team's going to be good, man. He's doing the right things. No question. You know, he's definitely doing it, you know, like from your, you getting to Princeton, how, how long was it from getting to Princeton? Oh, six, oh seven. You said, mm -hmm. yes. To, to, to Brett Harner, to Brett Harner being an all American. That was, Jesus. I'm not 16, good. At 17. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. So it was 10 years. It's about 10 years. Wow. And then it is, it's rolling now though, dude. <laughs> Holy I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a funny story about 10 years. So I'm at the Ohio States. It's my first, it's my first year at Princeton. And, uh, and I'm recruiting and, and I'm walking in the atrium and I see Roger Reyna, who's at Penn. Now, me and Roger, we don't, you know, like we're friendly and stuff, but I only lost to Penn guys at the EIWA. So the, my only losses ever to the EIWA is Ryoshi Nakamura and Brett Matter. Oh, so this Penn thing was like a thorn in my side, right? Those guys aren't bad. We're talking about an NCAA <laughs> chief, uh, yeah. a no. judo king, right. and a third in the NCAA guy. Okay. I, I love those guys too. They're great people too. Like after the fact, you know, kind of build relationships and they're great guys. But so Roger, you know, it's my first year. I'm green. I think I'm just going to teach these guys how to, so I'm going to teach them some moves. And they're going to be, you know, all Americans. That's how naive I was. So anyway, so I run into him and he's like, hey, you know, how you doing? I was like, yeah, we were building this thing. He goes, it's going to take 10 years. And in my head, I was like, he's messing with me. He's messing with me. He's trying to throw me off. He's trying to make me think I can't do it. I'm going to have this thing turned around in a year or two. <laughs> well, guess what? It took 10 years. <laughs> so so it's pretty funny. The Raina story, like, I really... I really thought it was going to be so much faster than it actually was. So now he comes back <laughs> and I go up to him and I go, Hey, guess how long it's going to take? <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> he, goes, he goes, how long? I go, I 10 love years. Uh, <laughs> he got like, it, yeah. right? He got it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I talked fun. to him at uh, St. Edwards last yeah. year, right before the pandemic. And yeah, yeah that guy is, that guy's really smart, and that guy really gets it. They're doing a great job. They're doing oh, a, yeah, really he does a great job, job. And, and that's good for the EIWA and the Ivies too. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot of strength in the Ivies right now. I think I don't know if we've ever been as strong as we are right now, and and uh, you know, we just need to. They need to keep getting better. We need to keep getting better. Everybody needs to keep getting better. Talk about getting stronger, right? <clears throat> News uh, last week, right? Join it. Uh, partner with it. NYC RTC, right? Yeah. Can you fill us in on that? Yeah. So it just makes sense. Um, it actually really evolved from our alumni. So 
our alumni, um, Rich Tavoso and Mike Novogratz, are really good friends with a couple of Colum Columbia alumni, Kira Berry, Dave Berry, and kind of a little bit with Andy Barth. Now, the interesting thing about those five people is they have all been or are world or Olympic, uh, you know, Olympic team, you know, leaders, basically, they're the ones that travel with the team. So it just kind of happened that it was like, we should work together. We're already kind of talking with each other. And Zach is from New Jersey. I recruited Zach actually at Lehigh. Uh, Joe Dubuque and Zach have a, they were both at the edge. So they're friendly. Um, so it was like, sort of like, hey, like we should have some practices together because <laughs> we got some good guys. So really that was the nexus of it. And, and Reese really got that ball rolling. And then he talked to Kendall and it was like, we really need to just, we're so close. Like the unique thing about this, uh, where we're situated compared to, you know, the big 10 teams. And, and that is, we have within an hour and 15 minutes, there's, there's five or six RTCs that are really darn good. So we're just going to get together. Basically all it's going to be really is, is getting the senior level guys together. Some of the better U23 guys every week. So one, once a week, we'll go to, you know, Hoboken up to the edge where, where the uh, NYC RTC trains, they'll come to us. We might go to a middle location. Um, you know, Coach Buxton has a great facility uh, in North Jersey. That's kind of between the two of us. I've talked with him about having some of the um, LVC or whatever they are, the Lehigh Valley RTC come there. We want to we wanna create an environment where we, we get an Olympic gold medal. Uh, for, for me personally, and for our organization, uh, we want to bring an Olympic gold medal back to Princeton, New Jersey. I mean, obviously we want it. My job, I'm the head coach at Princeton is to produce national champions and to hopefully bring a trophy from the NCAA tournament. But I believe in the Olympic movement, uh, it, it drives me. And I know if we do well at that level, the trickle down Right. into the college program will be pretty intense. So it's going to be fun. It, it, we've already had conversations. Uh, they had a practice together. It was ridiculous. <laughs> we had some kid, We had some guys in from some other clubs too that were, were sort of recruiting as well. It was an amazing room. So good things are happening. Good things are happening. So we had Anthony Ashnall on about a month ago, maybe. Ah, geez, I can't even keep track of when it was. And it was before Anthony had been announced as assistant coach. And we knew he was going that route. He couldn't really say it on air because they were still in the hiring process. He also couldn't say on air that you guys had separated yet. But I'm going to tell you this. He said nothing but good things about you guys. Yeah, he likes you guys. He likes the direction you guys were going. And the craziest, the craziest thing about it is those dual meets where he's got to wrestle Kaladzic. <laughs> and you guys were training together. It was like when he was, ta you know, he was talking about that a little bit. And Anthony's a good dude. I like Anthony a lot, obviously. Um, but he had nothing but good things to say about you guys. And he wasn't, he didn't trash you guys at no point off camera. You know, and I like that. I respect that about Anthony Ashton. And I know you got a res lot of respect for him too. Yeah, I, I, I totally love the Rucker staff too. I mean, I, I, I lived with John Leonardis at Lehigh. So no. we, have, we have a huge, a lot of history. And then Scott's a great guy. It's per the way things are set up right now are, is great. And our RTC too, in relation, those guys, Scarlet Knights can come in there whenever they want. They know our schedule. So it's, it's, it's really good. I mean, so the door is still open. The door yeah, is still oh, open for totally, Scarlet Knight. Totally. Absolute right. See, I didn't know that. He didn't he didn't like lead off that it was uh, like there was beef or anything, but he's no, like no, we're not together anymore, basically. No beef. No beef. It's just it was tough to be honest with you. I mean, we haven't really talked this is the first time I think any of us are talking publicly about it. It was just tough coordinating, to be honest with you. It was like, you know, they they got their thing going, we had our thing going. Um, and it was just, it was just a little difficult getting, getting everybody, buddy, everybody on the same page. We're, we're great though. I mean, it, I'm, trust me, like this area of wrestling, I think we're, we're leading it into a new era where I believe this is going to be, this is going to be the hotbed for senior level wrestling, um, is going to be this area. I mean, the, the influx of great wrestlers is, is, you know, them getting Miles Martin, Jane Cox coming here. Um, there's more to come too. So it's, it's, it makes sense. Basically there's, there's no better concentration of senior level athletes than, than where we are. And we're at the center of it all. 
so just talk about Jaden a little bit. You know, Jaden's situation was Jaden is in Colorado Springs yep. training at the OTC, but not at the OTC because I don't think it was open. So he had kind of a difficult training situation at the OTC. So Jaden was quasi at Ohio RTC and, you know, he left Missouri. He went to Colorado Springs. He was at Ohio for, I, you know, I don't really know how much he was really at Ohio. I don't know the story, but bringing Jaden Cox to New Jersey and, and then, you know, in New York and New Jersey, and it's all a train right away. Everything's a 45 minute train right away. Right. Yeah. What's that mean to you guys to have Jaden Cox? You know, if you want to talk trickle down of greatness, yeah. what's it like to have that guy out there? I mean, I give it all to Reese. I mean, I was in conversations, but he was really heading that whole thing up. And the whole, the whole thing, adding Jaden Cox here, he's just a great human being. I mean, never mind his ability in wrestling. Like the, the trickle down effect of who he is as a person is amazing. Is amazing. I am. I am as excited for him as a human coming into our program and, you know, being a leader for our guys and them being in the room with him as I am for him as a wrestler, which he's pretty damn good at wrestling too. So, so it's like a really good situation. And then I think he looked at it like, wow, like I, I have amazing training partners, Nate Jackson, Miles Martin, um, you know, there's just, you know, uh, Schaefer, Austin Schaefer. I mean, he has training partners here, which I think he might have had a little trouble with in the past, like getting the, the guys that he would like to work out with. So the impact of him being around our guys is is it's incredible. And he, and he will be spending time in Colorado Springs, too. So it's a it's a part time situation. Loves Kevin Jackson, loves the Olympic Training Center. Again, it's like, hey, you know, we can help you. That's really what it came down to. Like we can help you get what you want this situation is going to enhance what you, what you already have. We're going to provide you with things that you just, you're just not going to get at Colorado Springs the whole time. So it's, it's an amazing situation uh, for us. I think it's an amazing situation for him as well. You bring up coach uh, Humphrey Reese. Uh, he was our first guest on Barbarian Hour, obviously a special guy uh, yeah. in and out of the sport, right? You know, everyone loves Reese. You know, talk about that relationship with, with him. He's amazing. Uh, this year, especially, he's been, we've leaned a lot on him, uh, just with the Ivy's canceling. And then, you know, we had situations where we weren't in our room. We weren't sure what we could do outside our room with COVID protocols and whatnot. So a lot of the time it was turned over to Reese. And one thing that I'll, that I say to everyone that's great about Reese, he's never said no. He's never, I've, you know, I've, I've floated a million things by him and I've been like, this is going to be pretty tough for Reese. He's pretty busy. He travels a lot, but I'll throw it at him. And, and he says yes every time. And so in our crew, uh, which we do have a pretty good crew, I mean, he's, he's on board for doing what's necessary. I mean, to be great at this stuff, you got to just, you got to have a very, you know, your self-preservation has to be pretty low. You have to, you have to just be like, I'm willing to hurt. I'm it's willing true. to suffer. Uh, I'm, I don't care. I'm going to put myself out there to get the thing done. And, and that's exactly what Reese does. And, and he's been great too, in terms of you get an idea and it's like, Hey, I think we need to expand the RTC a little bit. We have this situation and he's out there hustling, by the way, that's like one of the hardest things is this. People think it's like, ah, oh, you just pay for a guy and he comes. This RTC business is brutal. There's not, there's not a lot of really good guys. And there's a lot of RTCs that, that want these guys. I mean, right. I wish, I wish I was growing up at this time. I mean, I was like a, a poor assistant. I was working construction and trying to compete at the same time, you know, and now it's like, Hey, we'll pay you a full-time salary to come here, but everybody's offering that now in terms of that. So Reese has been phenomenal impact. I mean, it's, the thing that's been, you know, we've we, we've grown a lot, and you were there in the beginning, Zeb. The number one thing that's enhanced us and has helped us grow is we just keep adding great people. I mean, that's the secret sauce to any organization. You can have buildings and, you know, nice whatever, and you can be in a great area. But at the end of the day, if you have the right people, like, you can do amazing things. And that's what, what I've been blessed with is sort of we we've – kept adding because we have resources 
and we've been a little lucky. It takes a little luck to get the right people and, and they get in our organization. They get really excited about it. So that's been, that's been recent in a nutshell too. He was just, you know, we were here, we added Reese. It's like, we go to that next level. You add a Jaden, you go up a little bit more. So we're always thinking about resources in terms of what people can we add to our crew? Um, that's going to make us, you know, that's going to make them great. To be honest, like if you're a coach, this is a great proving ground, a great place to learn how to be a great coach. If you're an athlete, it doesn't get much better. Um, you know, we went from not having a national qualifier in 2006, seven, 2007, eight to in the last six years, we've had five world team members come out of the RTC. So that's a pretty, and I don't, I don't know though. I have to look at this. We were talking about this on a call the other day. I don't think Princeton's ever had a world team member. And so to have five of them in the past six years is, is, is that's pretty, that's pretty good progress. When you look at the landscape, you know, you, you talk about buildings, you talk about facilities, but I mean, you're, if you look at Princeton, everybody wants to go to Princeton, man. Everybody who, who is any type of student wants to go to Princeton. It is the, I mean, if the Ivy league, Columbia Brown, Yale, uh, Dartmouth, Princeton, uh, Jesus, Pete's Cornell, Penn. And then you look at the academies, Harvard, obviously. Sorry, I forgot Harvard. That's like the brand name <laughs> Ivy to everybody. That's okay. You know, we can forget them. We'll forget them, right? But I mean, and then you got the three academies. You're battling against kids for the three academies, right? Army, Lehigh's, Le Bell, and then Lehigh, 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 and then Lehigh. It, it's wild though, right? Yeah. When you look at it, do you guys ever have a problem when you call a kid who can get into Princeton? Do you ever have a problem competing with schools who are given full rides? Do you ever have that problem? Yeah, it depends on the school. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a range where it gets difficult, right? So if you're like 225, your family makes about 225,000 to 250, you can pay a lot of it, but it might hurt a little bit, you know? So that's sometime, the sweet spot. That's the sweet spot between two parents. That's like literally the fastest, literally, is that it? 250 225 because if you get above that any significant it, it doesn't hurt that bad you're just making you're you're basically making a ton of money yeah it doesn't matter below, yeah exactly you're gonna pay if you below <laughs> that you get this deal that's like usually better than a scholarship with the financial aid which is all grant so you don't pay it back so there is times where you know that question is a big question to figure out where what their parents do and that's sort of where yeah it definitely happens the other thing too is that that's interesting is you know, it, geographically, sometimes um, kids don't get it. They don't get the opportunity. That's Princeton. And what, you know, what <laughs> happens after you graduate from a place like this and the opportunities that, that come that are just different. And, 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 and I get it too. Like I, I coached at a, a non-Ivy team that was not Princeton. And I thought like, it's the same. You get the same opportunities. And, you know, there's coaches at Big Tens that go, why would you go to Princeton? Like you could get the same opportunities, but it's just, they just don't know any better that it's, it, it is totally different. So, so sometimes geographically we get kids that, you know, that grown up around, uh, you know, different college settings and, you know, like the academic thing maybe isn't, isn't as appealing to them. And then you get a scholarship and then, you know, they've looked at that school for a while. So it's actually a little bit trickier than, than you think we have to, we're in some battles a lot. Um, and that's the type of scholarship Midwest ish kid. Those are challenges sometimes. But yeah. When you look at this, how successful everybody is, I Googled uh, Harner's name. Oh, yeah. I Googled, I Googled Harner's name. Yeah. The second thing that comes up for uh, Harner's name, your first all American Brett Harner is he's an associate in trading at Ga galaxy galaxy digital. Um, it looks like he's That's trading. Right? He probably only makes like, like probably north of five hundred thousand dollars a year or something. So it's like it's not it's not even about wrestling. It's about what he does yeah. for a living and his, all these different things about jobs he does and trading he does and other things. So that so that was that was interesting too with the hot. So that's Novagrass's company. So that was the first hedge fund to focus on. Um, you know, digital currencies, Bitcoin. Right. Yeah, he's, yeah, Mike Novogratz is into Bitcoin a little bit, into crypto, just a little bit. If you ever look at his Twitter feed, he's out Yo of his Yoshi mind. too, right? Not to yeah, bring Yoshi's in, right? 
he worked he worked at galaxy as well Yoshi, right, right, they worked right. together and, and then uh fred's in, in hong kong though right now but so okay so so hold on actually yoshi lives by me yoshi hey, lives on the back. east side of uh, east side of cleveland now oh does he yeah he moved he over here back. i believe it. yeah i believe he moved back to ohio because his oh, wife is over. from mayfield so okay so mike novogratz obviously <laughs> one of the 500 richest guys on the planet he's he's princeton alum um have you got to ever go to the one of the parties, by the way? Oh, yeah. You've been to the, did yeah. you see the Chili Peppers play or yeah. anything like that? I saw the Chili Peppers. You it saw was... the Chili Peppers at a private party at night, Mike Novogratz's house. It, hey, I'll tell you this. Like, let's get to some good stuff. So, so I was at that Chili Peppers thing. And, and so it's like, I mean, so hold maybe... on. This isn't a concert. This is at a man's backyard. Yeah, two, 200 people probably. It's in it's, the Hamptons. Yeah, it's pretty big though. I mean, it's, it was a big tent. It was pretty good. So, Chili peppers are coming on. I feel like they're just going to dial it in, right? Like, so, I mean, they're just going to come on. They're going to play a set. You know, Flea is going to be a little bored. Uh, and then they're going to hop off the stage. They got after it. It was, <laughs> so awesome. it was crazy. It was so crazy. I was probably three rows back and like, and Flea was going crazy. It was awesome. It was it was like one of the best shows I've ever seen. It goes all weekend too. It's 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 an incredible. So you've been to that. Place. You've yeah. been to that. Yeah, wow. it's awesome. A couple times. Oh, just a couple. Yeah. I, I, so usually, I, so wow. I, unfortunately, usually I'm recruiting, so I've missed like probably three of them, uh, but I've been to two. Is it a standing invitation, or does he have to invite you every year? Y- yeah, you get invited every year. So it's every year and it's probably like does a person roll up in like a a chariot and then they like shoot an arrow with like a message and it lands on it goes on the wall and then you gotta it's not it's not united states postal service got it it's just regular first class now got it okay (laughs) that makes sense right i mean that makes sense uh so hold on you've never had a transfer Mm -hmm. but you had a guy graduate recently yeah grad graduate transferred i listen I'm not even trying to zing you here, Coach Aaron. No, no, not even, that's not my that's not even my style. Not zinged. I'm good. <laughs> but Brucky, Brucky yeah. goes to Michigan. He's from Illinois, right? From Carl Sandberg High School. Did his brother leave as well from the RTC? No, he's still here. Uh, that that he, that speaks to your guys' relationships. Yeah, that's yeah. that talks that 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 is the type of guys I mean, you are. Brucky was at my house at graduation three weeks ago getting ribs i mean so we didn't want to lose pat i'll be perfectly honest like he could have he could have done another year here but he would have to take the year off for him in engineering it was tough man it was like he could have got this year done could get a graduate degree at michigan um it's a good deal i love pat brucky he he impacted our program uh maybe more than any wrestler has ever impacted our program i'll tell you this he's the best he was the best captain I've ever had, period. Wow. So, you know, we didn't get four years with Pat, but I am I am totally uh, indebted to his service to our program uh, for the three years he was here. Again, he was the best. He was easily the best captain that, that, that I've ever seen. Um, and he's going to have a huge impact at Michigan, too. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's tough a little bit, but, like, hey, look, if he wins NCAAs, um, you know, I want our guy to win NCAs, obviously, but if he wins it, man, you know, I'm going to run up and give him a huge hug. He's, 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 you know, I am I'm, I'm very close with Pat. Um, so yeah, so, uh, it's all good. That's it's awesome. All good. No zingers here. We're, we're, we have a great relationship he's good. He's part of our crew. It just made sense for him. That was what worked best for him at that but time. He graduated from Princeton, then yeah. a graduate yeah. transferred. Let's just get yeah. that out of the way. Yeah. The so man is a Princeton good. graduate. Yeah. Now he's gonna back. get gonna get a grad degree from Michigan. Man, he was and, the coach. And the and the engineering degree he's gonna get at Michigan. They're one of the best schools for it. Uh, for I can't, it's like he's civil. I don't know exactly what it's called, but he's gonna. Yeah, I mean, it's it wasn't a bad move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he was. It was. It was. It was a pretty. It was a pretty smart move. It hurt in the beginning. I'm not gonna lie, man. I I, I was like, man. We, we, we could really love, I'd love to have Pat a year, but it all worked out. We're good. We're good. Unreal, man. I love it. I love hearing it. So, okay. So you've done the Novogratz parties. 
uh, on the weekend. What, what's the weekend for the Novogratz parties, by the way? It's all weekend. So there's events. I it's haven't a been... summer. It's a summer weekend, though, is my point. So you're on. T- yeah. Jeez. Uh, it's is it uh, July. You know what? What am I having? To wear? No, it's like earlier. It's, it's, like, it's June. It's a June type deal. June. So it's coming up. June, right in the. Well, it's every four years. Oh, but, it's not. It's it's not every year. It's not annual. Every four years. Yeah. Wow. And you've yeah. been to two of them. Yeah. And, and uh, you get put on teams and there's all these competitions. So it's like, there's usually four teams. There's a theme. There's all, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's Who have you been at the party with on a team with what, what actor, actress, <laughs> billionaire, rich person, famous person that I would know who have you been competing against or on a team with at Novogratz's party? So I can't do the events because I'm always, I'm always recruiting. So I only come for like a night and a day. Uh, but you know, the biggest celebrity that I've seen around there was probably Jesse Jansen. <laughs> you know, Come on, man. Yeah. You gotta no, give us more I, than that. You honestly, know, we like, already all know Jesse Jansen. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, to be honest, it's so weird. Like you just, everybody's kind of the same. You don't, I don't even know, to be honest with you. I like flea, obviously flea and Anthony Kiedis. Yeah, okay, yeah, so those got, guys uh, were there. They had another band. I can't remember who arcade fire. They had arcade fire. I know that. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I'm, and That's the awesome. other thing about me is I know, I know very little about anything other than wrestling. So you ask me, I don't watch TV. I don't know celebrities. I don't know anything about any other. You know sport. the chili poppers though. I know, I know music. I know music because I, I can it. listen to it in a wrestling room. There you go. So, he does like, uh, I, I think he's at uh, what the, who's the DJ? Or the Oki? Oh yeah. I think that, I think he had that. He was at actually, he was at the, uh, he was at beat the streets. Yeah. I saw him at beat the streets. <laughs> So, anyway. yeah, I think Hada knows his dad. You're just talking about yeah, Dave Habit. Hada, yeah, Dave uh, Habit. Yeah, no, Hada and his dad are buddies, I think. Right. That's what Habit said. So, I don't right. know. Habit would know, right? Habit would know. Okay, coach. So, you guys look at the year you guys had, which the year you didn't have, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, who did I have? I had Stefanik at an RTC event and Brucky at an RTC event in Pittsburgh. So, that was the only exposure I had to, 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 Princeton wrestling this year as far as competition, right? Because you didn't have a year. Yeah. Are you confident that and I, I I listen, I'm only asking you to speak for Princeton. I'm not asking you to speak speak for yeah. Cornell, which we'll get to Cornell and and the cataclysmic events with Cornell wrestling here in the last couple of weeks. Are you confident that the Princeton Tigers will have a season in the 21 22 season? I am confident. Uh Everything that's come from the president's office is saying that it's going to be as normal as possible pending, you know, something happened. I don't know, some variant or something like that. But, um, yeah, we're going to have a season. Um, if not, uh, I'm going to lose my mind, essentially, and who knows what else. So, so yeah, I think we're going to have a season. As long as, it, as long as the numbers stay where they are and people keep getting vaccinated, I think that we're going to have – we're going to, we're going to be fine. Does it make you a little nervous when I ask that question? Uh, yeah, because every time I've said, I thought, like, every time I said, I thought this is going to happen during this thing, I was wrong. So I get super nervous about saying, like, we're going to have a season because, you know, all year I've been just totally wrong on everything I've guessed on throughout this pandemic. So, uh, yeah, I definitely, I, I always get a little nervous saying, yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> Okay, so uh, listen, I'll go to it. I'm just going to do it. Jared, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off here. You ready? We've had a, you've had a pretty public rivalry with Cornell. Mm-hmm. There was a pretty emotional thing that happened when you guys finally beat them in the dual meet. <laughs> what did you say when you guys finally beat Cornell? I think it was Stefanik. One, did he beat Darmstadt? Is that what it was? Oh, he beat Low. He beat Low. Okay. So Stefanik beats low and there's just this outpouring of emotion from you. You were pretty fired up, yeah. right? Yeah. I was fired up. <laughs> I was fired up. You know up. what I'm talking about. Yeah. You had just this outpouring of emotion and you finally beat Cornell. Yeah. And, and it was told to you that that wasn't going to ever happen. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. How fired up were you guys when you finally beat Cornell and we'll get to the situation, Rob Cole, even right. But talk about when you guys finally beat Cornell in that dual meet. It was at Jadwin too, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a good, it was a good crowd. We beat, 
Cornell. Um, you know, it's been something we've been working for. I, to be honest, the program uh, has been through a lot. Like you mentioned earlier, we, we could go back to the early 90s when they tried to drop the program. You know, then they took the wrestling room away. It was a football weightlifting room. Uh, they were rolling out Matts and Dylan, keeping the program alive. Uh, they raised a bunch of money to get it back. They had an endowment. And then, you know, it was tough times. You know, they were always, you know, having trouble placing in the upper half of the EIWA. When I got there, we were last. So to get to that moment of like, you know, Cornell had the longest Ivy League championship winning streak of any sport at any school. So it was like monumentally huge. Um, and we knew we could do it. And so what had happened, it was just, you know, it was a lot of, a lot of things came to that moment. And it was a big deal, honestly. I, and I'm usually pretty laid back about, you know, I don't get too excited about much, but I was pretty excited in that moment. We what had this wheelbarrow. What did Cole say? What did Cole tell you that was never going to happen? Yeah, he said we 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 couldn't do it. Like back in my earlier years, uh, and it was it wasn't like malicious or anything either. It was just sort of like, man, you know, you can't do what we're doing because you know it's just too hard to get in, and you don't have the resources, and what a bummer. You're a good coach, but um, you know you just can't do it. So. You know, I'm actually pretty close with Cole. I mean, I've t I talk with him the most of all of all the Ivy League coaches, um, even though we've had some a few little uh, tiffs, I guess, in social media. But I think it's all for fun when I'm doing stuff like that. I think it's it's pretty entertaining. And so, uh, you know, so it was good. And, and that moment wasn't about like him saying that it was really honestly about all our alums all those kids that were 0 and 20 at the EIWAs who kept the program growing. Cause honestly, those kids could have left like D one is too hard. It's too hard, man. I, I've been through this too many. It's the hardest thing in sports. There's nothing harder in sports. I guarantee it than a freaking D one wrestling season. If you see what a kid goes through during that, especially at a high academic school. So, you know, those kids that didn't win, um, the alums that gave the money to get the program back, you know, there's so many people that, you know, own that moment. And that's what came to me. It was sort of like, we did it. You know, we did, we did, we did, we did something that no one thought would ever happen back when they said this program's dropped. And so it's funny. We have this wheelbarrow that we bring. There's a whole story with that. I, that that's probably for a whole nother episode, but we have this wheelbarrow that's painted with a shield and stuff. And I like, but Stefanik scored. It was a crazy scramble, too. It was like, it looked like Lowe was going to score, actually. Stefanik pulled some magic out of his hat and, you know, ended up on top and got the win. And, and once he scored, I just walked away from everybody. I saw the wheelbarrow. I flipped it over. <laughs> and I just kind of walked out of the gym for I some love reason. It. And I was like, wait, there's more matches. So I had to come back and walk <sighs> back in the gym. I'd be like, but it was a cool moment for our program. And really, honestly, it was about, it was about like, we had all the alums there. It was just cool, man. It was cool. Oh man. What a moment. That's so awesome. I mean, not listen, the highlight video they put together for yeah. that, whoever did it, your digital media people. Yeah, they're good. That was really, I mean, that you get hyped. Right. And I think it's like, sh is it short hair? Or it's long haired Stefanik. I think. Yeah. Long hair. Yeah, it's long hair. Lion. He looks like a lion in there. Yeah, he looks like he's got a sweet lion's mane. Yeah. I saw him this winter and he had the short hair and I was a little yeah. disappointed. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. But, you know, like he, uh, you know, that that's just a signature win for you guys. And I love it. And the fact that you and it's that it's cool between you and Cole and it's, you yeah. know, he yeah. said that to you and not in like a, hey, you guys suck. Good luck with that. He felt but bad, you know. He was like, like he was kind of matter of fact about it. Yeah, right? He was like, like, "Yeah, you just can't do it there." Yeah, for sucks, instance, sorry, buddy. Right? Like, yeah, you're at Lehigh, but now you know you're here, and so, man, good luck. <laughs> so, and, and and I, you know, I, he was right at the time. I mean, I even for me, it was hard to see. I always knew we could do it, though. I always, I always felt like we had the ingredients. I always felt like we had the, the bare bones to build, and. uh you know, when he said that, though, it's hard to, you know, it, like all the facts are pointing to he's right <laughs> at the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was good. It wasn't really the win had nothing. To do. It was like, yeah, it was Cornell, but it was more about, you know, overcoming, 
Yeah, hard, and you, hard you got the job done. You got the job done. Uh, Jared and I work with this uh, organization called OAC, and the Kolodzik brothers were a big part of OAC, and they won junior high state championships. Jared, did both of them win multiple? Uh, yes, and Daniel yep. and Russ, my brother, a few times. So Daniel, yeah. Daniel and Matthew both won OAC state titles, and then uh, Daniel won – Three Ohio State titles. I think I'm right there. Yeah, he, he lost won. his yeah. senior year. Yeah, so I think he, he won. won he won two. He won two. Right. So they both were the only guys on the team at Miami Valley Country Day. <laughs> and then um, Matthew won one for Miami Valley Country Day as a freshman, and then went to Blair. They're Ohio guys. I'm going to claim them all day. Yeah. Listen, I'm just listen. This might be an unpopular opinion. I don't mind it, but I'm always going to claim Ohio guys who wrestled here. And I'll take the Paul brothers too. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to take the Paul brothers. <laughs> That's oh, great. For OU or what? No, he never wrestled for OU. Let's get that straight. He was a division one state placer. Um, Logan Paul. OHSA. That's was OHSA state placer in division one in Ohio. Abinator won the weight. He wrestled Abinator in the district district finals and Abinator murdered him. I mean, he's pretty tough. A meme, right? He's Remember legit. Him? He's actually legit. Like he, he, that guy's a good athlete. Yeah, it's not like he's not tough. He's pretty. No, no, no. That guy's a legit athlete. And people get mad at me. I'm like, no, listen, that guy is because I think he was he was a first team all state tailback for Westlake. Doug Dake was a state champ for Westlake, FYI. Didn't Percival coach them guys? Yeah, guys? Percival coached both the Paul brothers. The Paul brothers are actually the oldest one, the one who just fought Floyd Floyd Mayweather. That guy's actually a legit talented guy and a freak athlete, like a gifted athlete. So, but hold on. We got the Kolodzik brothers. Let's let's get back to the guys I really want to talk this. about. <laughs> Matthew and Daniel, right? Daniel lost in the round of 12 for you guys. And he yeah. was kind of the first real guy to break through and be a threat for Princeton wrestling under Chris Ayers, right? Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, and he was right there. He lost in the round of 12. And then you got Matthew out of Blair, which is an Ohio guy. That's what this is all about. I'm an Ohio homer. You should know that. But when you bring a guy like Matthew, and I think Matthew Kolodzik is, he's been the signature guy in your program. And, and now I think it's largely Pat Glory that, that, you know, but if you look about it, look at it and your most decorated guy ever, it's Matthew Kolodzik. Yeah. He's the well, guy. That's he, the guy. And, and you wrote him. He's the guy. Um, ha, it's hard to talk about Matthew just because he really got – if anyone got the shaft on this COVID thing, it was him. Um, so interesting, like just a little rewind. He's the first four-time All-American for Princeton uh, wrestling. Um, you know, first EIWA champion, first freshman All-American, first Midlands champion. He's the first everything. Um, and in his senior year, which was the COVID year, 20, um, you know, Mike D'Angelo goes down. He was in a year off. Mike D'Angelo gets hurt and, and everyone ranked in the weight at the top, you know, top three, Matthew's beat. And so we're sitting there looking at that and we're going to ourselves like, and he was wrestling great, by the way. I mean, like in the room and stuff with the RTC, we're like, this kid is, he looks awesome. And so pull him in and I said, Hey, looks pretty good right now. I mean, you see what's going on, right? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I see what's going on. I was like, you want to do it now? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And the funny thing about Matthew is he had a little, if you look at his career, he had some dips during the season. So every year he, he had some weird losses. So, and some guys are just like this. It was, he, he was, his endurance on a season. Long wasn't, season. Right, I mean. Yeah. He wasn't great. Right. So he, 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 so shortening the season for him. So like we were thinking we were like geniuses, right? Like we're like, oh, this is perfect. Like, But you were, you actually were, and it would have panned out. I, I'm just, I mean, I'm a obviously a huge Kolodzik fan. Yeah. It was going to pan out for you. Guys. And, and there's more to it too. Like we figured something, I, the things that went wrong with this situation. So he had won all his matches, but what was happening, I don't know if you remember watching him, He'd get ahead and he and he would and he would start to stall to get out of the match. So he had all these matches where he was up by three or four, and he'd just start like hanging on. And what he would do is he'd like try to keep the guy away and he'd go out of bounds, try to keep the guy away, go out of bounds, get hit for stalling. 
and he's terrible in the open. <laughs> so we had figured out the week, I swear, the week before nationals, I was like, oh my God, Kalaza, you got to grab the guy. You got to hold him in because that's like what you're the best at. So we did all these match simulations where like he couldn't go out of bounds and he, and it was, I swear in my mind, I was like, we got this thing. So at the same time, COVID's going on. And so I can't remember what exact, it was a Thursday, I think, before, before we we're supposed to leave, you know, they pulled the plug. So that was really hard, but we were like, okay, like he wrestled in three events, three events, and he didn't get NCAs. We're going to get it. We're going to get a, a fifth year. We're just, we're asking for a fifth year, five, the fifth year. And so we put the waiver in, they say no. So we, we say like, okay, this is bullshit. Like what's going on here? They still say no. The next year comes around. Okay. So now he, he's still in school, by the way. So he's got to finish out his, cause he, he had taken the year off. He was planning on coming back this year to make a run for it, but we pulled him out early. So, um, so he, this year, the NCA says, Hey, we're going to give everyone an extra year. Right. So, so everyone gets an extra one. So I'm like, I'm like compliance lady. I was like, we got to fight this. This is ridiculous. Anyone could see that this Kalodzic guy compared to everyone else, this guy of anyone should get one more year. So they say no again. So now we're to the point and it, and it bothers me. And it's fine because this year got, you know, for us in the Ivies, it probably would have been, probably would have just added insult to injury for him to get released, but he could have got a grad year, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, some guys are going to have seven years, seven years of D1 wrestling. We were asking for five. What's his name? Myers. Myers from uh, Virginia Tech. Carbon Myers. Well, what about like Kemmerer? And Kemmerer. Like, there's a t- There's. It's a. It's a pretty good list. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, I, it's, it's a big list of people. You're absolutely correct. I don't think it's like two kids are going to get. No, seven. no, no. It's 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 double digits. Yeah. So so like that. So I feel you know. It's hard, but he's, he's very mature. You know, he's a smart kid and they've always been, I mean, they've always he, he, been. He, yeah. They're great. I mean, the family's amazing. I'm, I'm so blessed to have the Kalodzics. Honestly, the dad and mom are amazing. Daniel was the trendsetter for us. He was our first ranked recruit. Um, he was, he was, he struggled for two years. Then we figured it out. And so, yeah. So Matthew, um, yeah, that situation is tough for me. I really believed last year he was going to be, he was going to him or glory. I really felt like we're going to win nationals. Um, and I didn't know who, and I really felt Kalazic was in the driver's seat. I really, I was super confident. So anyway, long story short, it sucked. <laughs> Coach Ayers, you guys, um, you know, Princeton, it, it, you know, it's the Ivy league. It's the standard in education on the planet earth. It's, it's not in question. It's not a statement. Zeb Miller's making it. It's a fact. You have kids, right? Yeah. You have a daughter who's very, very talented at girls wrestling. What is your daughter's plan? Did she win New Jersey State twice? Uh, two, three times. This three third, times. Three times, yep. Super talented. Where, what is the path for your daughter? Yep. And, and, and where do you go from there? And, and do, do you guys, obviously, if you're a guy like Urban Meyer at Ohio State, right? You're Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. Your kids are getting into that school. Do you guys pull any weight as employees at Princeton to get your kids in? So, uh, so Chloe's going to Princeton. So, uh, nice. I'm, with it, with a 3% admissions rate, a little bit over 3%, I think it might've helped. But the interesting thing is I had no idea. Like she, it was just like every other student. Like I had, they gave me no, no indication whatsoever of like, it was going to be good. I mean, she opened her thing in front of us, like her admissions thing, just like any other kid would. And she was accepted. And um, yeah, so we're, we're thrilled. It's a really special place. I mean, <laughs> we didn't say this to her, but we, my wife and I, and she wanted to go, we were all hoping and praying that this would be the spot that she got. So it's a good situation in the, and my wife uh, is really involved with the effort on, in D1. Uh, with women's wrestling and starting trying to start programs and 
um, her and Kira Berry and uh, Jackie Davis, they formed this organization called D1 Women's Wrestling. Definitely check out the socials. Um, but next fall, there'll be six Ivy League club teams. And what we've learned in the process of trying to really um, promote women's wrestling and, and create more opportunities is really that's where it has to start. It has to start from the student body and these club teams. And then these club teams can turn into varsity teams. Um, so she, I mean, my wife, like she's a teacher, but the second, every second she's not teaching, she's really working for women's wrestling. Um, so there's going to be some cr cool opportunities. So for my daughter here at Princeton, um, there's, there's three girls that are, I would say that are very serious about wrestling and have done the Fargo thing. And then there's about 16 girls who are interested in, in learning about wrestling and, and getting involved that are students. So we have about uh, 19 girls in our club. Um, uh -huh. And that's how it starts. Um, so it's, it's moving really fast. Uh, people are finally in the wrestling community. People are finally um, pushing for women's wrestling. I think the cliche term that got us nowhere and really set us way behind other sports. I could get into the numbers if you want to, but you know, the, the word support. Uh, yeah. I support women's wrestling. Yeah. What, what does that mean? Like, that means like if a girl shows up, like you'll allow her to be on your team? Is that, is that the sport? But really what we needed to do is work on creating opportunities for women and pushing women to choose wrestling. I, I'm embarrassed, like I didn't, I pushed for my son to wrestle. I said, hey buddy, you wanna wrestle? You got to wrestle, you know, we wrestle in this family. I never pushed for my daughter. She had to come to me and say, hey, I'll, you know, basically I wanna wrestle and you know, it probably would have happened three years sooner. So, you know, it's just a different mindset. Um, that's happening right now, which is helping us get to where we should be with women's wrestling. So long story there. So, but a lot of information, but yeah, we're very passionate about women's wrestling and it's, it's huge for our sport. It can't be denied. You, you so, mentioned the wife pushing for it, you know, at the collegiate level, and then <clears throat> you in the home, you, know, you said the daughter, your daughter came to you, but what's that look like? Right. Cause there's, there's two aspects of it, right. That the big picture you know, here in Ohio, it's not even sanctioned yet, which yeah. I don't know how it's not, but, you know, but then there's the conversation in the home, you know, what you said, she came to you. What, what's that look like in the home of, you know, getting her into the sport where you're familiar with it, but you know, for her, it's not so familiar. Right. It was, so, it was so stupid to be honest with you. <laughs> like, like she's just a wrestler. So that's where the thing that came down to it. It's like, duh. And I'm watching her do practice and go through the trials and tribulations of this sport, which we all love. Why do we love it? Because before she got into the sport, though, you know, how, what was that like before she even? Got oh, into so it was interesting yeah. before yeah. she got into it. So she would come to practice. Like this is when we started to think, like, what's going on here? She's she'd ask to come to practice to watch. Mm -hmm. Then she'd like say, "Hey, can I help?" My son was like five. She's like, "Hey, can I help?" The and she's an older kids? sister, right? Yeah, older. Yeah. So she's like, "Can I help the little kids at?" club practice and I'd bring her and so like it was so stupid like she wanted to be part of it and you know dumb me doesn't see it she's I'm like ah oh, she should be a cheerleader or something like that just terrible like I can't even believe my I didn't come to like realize that she could get so much out of this sport and so uh, yeah so it did it, it was kind of silly I mean she was around it all the time going to his matches she was really intrigued by it and then finally we actually asked her because but, but it was essentially, she was coming to us. We were like, Hey, do you want to wrestle? And she was like, Oh my God. Yeah. You know, she was scared to say she wanted to wrestle. So um, yeah. So that's kind of what it looked like. She was, she couldn't not be around it because of what we do, you know? So, um, so yeah, it just took a little time. So, okay. Chloe airs. Here's another you humble brag thing where you, you're not even bragging. You're just a humble man. Your daughter got into Princeton without a slot. Yeah. an opportunity yeah, whatever you were, she was able to get in on her own merit yeah. that's incredible like you said the admission rate it's the one of the most competitive you know top eight competitive schools to get in in the world for her to get in how proud were you like you're saying like there there was no i'm guessing there's nothing for employees where you get extra points right there's points yeah. they give a point like, uh, alumni right if your parents are alumni yeah you get points for that right you're a Lehigh grad. You're not, you're not a Princeton grad, right? It's uh, your wife. Where'd your wife go? 
She went to York College of PA. So your wife's a York. You don't you don't have you have no pole there, right? <laughs> no. That's how it goes though, right? You have you have extra you get extra consideration if your parents are alum. I'm not making that up, right? I, well, it's it's different. Legacy now. is what it's called. Yeah. Legacy. I don't even know how much that plays into it. I mean, it does, I think, some of the time, but it's so different now, like in terms of, you know, with varsity blues and stuff. Um, you know, they've they've tightened things up a lot, I think. Um, and you don't back door really, and side door, right? You <laughs> never know, you never know. Like they're so it's so closed off their process, you don't even know what they're thinking. Um but yeah, it's, it's changed the, you know, my wife and I kind of pinch each other. It's really changed the trajectory of our family. The neat thing is about, it's sort of like being around something, you know, so, um, and, 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 and you can relate it to a wrestling program too. And what, what we're trying to do is she grew up around Princeton. That was her expectation. Like that's where I, this is what I'm used to. I should get this. And then it's a pretty, you know, when she's in first grade, I love Princeton. I want to go to Princeton. Well, if you want to go to Princeton, you have to get all A's. You can't get any B's and you have to take the hardest classes. And so it starts at that young age where that's what she expects and that's what she does. And, and you know, both my wife and I, we, uh, we, we're first generation. So we didn't have that. You know, our parents were amazing in other ways, but it wasn't, that wasn't pushed on us at all. And it's the same thing with wrestling. You get an environment and what I've tried to do and what we've tried to do is create an environment. And when you're in an environment where you look over your shoulder and there's Jaden Cox, all of a sudden, that's the expectation. And you see another human being there and you go, hmm, I can do that. And so I think those, there's kind of nice parallels there between her experience and just being around this place. And then, you know, when you're trying to build a program, what you're really trying to do and sort of just create that expectation like hey, I can win a world title or two of them or be an on the Olympic team. And so that's, that's sort of where, where we are. And, and for her, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't be more proud to be honest with you. Cause I, cause I wasn't sure, you know, and uh, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing thing. I'm, I'm so thrilled. Congratulations. By the Thank way. You. That's Thank you. awesome. That's, that's like so awesome. Like for you guys to be able to earn that for her to earn that, obviously yeah, she did it. And then it sounds like your wife's pretty involved. <laughs> But that's that's just incredible. Little, that's little, that's, little that's an amazing thing, you know, for you to be able to do that, and now her to be able to continue in the club avenue, and hopefully before her four years are up, you can add. And, I, and if I know anything about you, you're gonna be you're gonna be pretty heavy on that to add. You know, women's wrestling, Sacred Heart's done it right, yep. and they're in your conference. So I mean, that's awesome. Uh, Jared, we're coming up on overtime with Coach Ayers. Uh, okay. Coach Ayers, we like to be respectful of people's time. I'm having fun, man. It's okay. So, so I guess the question begs, are you ready for a little bit of overtime then? I'm never good at these things. If this is like rapid fire stuff. No, 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 no. It's just like, are you ready to go some more time? time? Oh yeah. I like overtime. Let's go. Well, I don't yeah. like, I mean, I'd rather win in regulation. <laughs> well, sure. It goes to overtime. I like more wrestling. That's good. Jared, are you good for overtime? I'm good. If you guys are good. I'm good. Yeah. So talking about your daughter man that really opens things up to, to you know as far as parenting because i like to get a lot of parenting advice um when i talk to people tommy rollins is the big one i like to like really pick his brain uh, first of all your son by the way chloe is 18 she's 18 he's 13 what's your son's name atticus so atticus and chloe Ayers are five years apart yeah okay so when you look at the sport of wrestling as a parent, right? I mean, you're, dude, you, you live this, you live for this. This is your deal. This yeah. is your passion in life. How do you make sure, you know, and it's like, uh, I was talking to coach Colette. He was in Ohio a couple of weeks ago for a camp and he brought his son with him. Who's kind of circling back around to the sport of wrestling. How do you not drive the kids away from wrestling? <laughs> Oh man, it's, it's interesting. So they're, they're so different. Um, and, and you, I don't put, I, it's funny. I, I don't push. I really don't. Every dad says that. And then you see them pushing their kid really hard. You know, it's like, I don't push my kid. And that's like, what the hell are you doing out there? Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I don't, I, I never really pushed them. Um, my son didn't listen to me at all. Like it was pretty funny. So Joe Dubuque and I, and, and some of the dads in the town, we run the youth program too. And both our kids are in it. It's been really fun too, by the way, we've got, the program's gotten a lot better. 
and we had the most state placers ever in our youth program. So it was pretty cool. This year was pretty neat. In a COVID year, we struggled, but uh, it would be funny. Like, so he didn't want to listen to me. So I'd be like, hey, Joe, like, you got to go tell Atticus this and that and the other thing. And sometimes I'd go over to, my, to him and I'd be like, hey, Atticus, like in this position, he'd go, I know, dad, I know. And I'd be like, in my head, I'd be like, you don't know. But, but anyway, so he, he was a little resistant, not that much into it. But, uh, but then this year he got into it and he was like, hey, man, I, I want to be good. And so he's, he's been really good. He's been super receptive this year. Um, Chloe's always been good about that. Like she, she kind of knew, she, she knows what she, I'll tell you this about Chloe. She knows what she wants. She wants to be really good at wrestling. She knows that I'm her resource. <laughs> so, so I get asked a lot of questions. I get, I get pulled into rooms a lot, which is really cool. We've had, it, it, wrestling is our family's life and it's sort of just evolved that way. It's sort of everything we, almost everything we do revolves around wrestling, but it's been so amazing because we're together as a family. We're going to these tournaments, the drives, you know, just the drives, you get to know your kids a little bit more. Um, the struggles of wrestling in terms of the losing and, you know, knowing how to put your arm around your kid and say, like, I get it. You know, this is not easy. And, you know, you just got to keep working hard. It's just those moments that it, we talk a lot about how wrestling teaches you, like when you're doing it, like it's this impactful thing. But when when you go through it with a with a family member, I think it's even more impactful because, as you guys know, with with relatives that maybe wrestled, it's often harder <laughs> to, to like coach your kid or your nephew or, or watch them wrestle. It like rips you apart way worse than you ever were ripped apart in a match yeah. because you had control. So it's been, it's been, we've been, I, I feel so blessed to be in the sport and our kids are loving it. So I don't know, long answer. I kind of rambled on there. I apologize. But you don't push, you don't push that much. You kind of uh, like delegate to other coaches. Yeah. And if they ask though, like, that's the thing. And if it ever gets a little, like, kind of like if there's tension, I just kind of walk away um, because it's not worth it. <laughs> like, it's like, sort of like we got to be calm and good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't want to ruin, ruin my relationship with my kids over like winning or the sport. You know, it's, it's not that important to me M loving my kids and having a good relationship with them, yeah. I think is what I'm finding is what's more important. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, here we are. We yeah. got a pretty good youth coach over here. You're in a good situation. Where I'm at, Jeff Farney, and and he does a pretty good job with kids, and he's the kids' t-ball coach, and he's you know, he's awesome. bought in on it, and he's really into my kids, and um, he kind of treats them how they need to be treated, though. If he's got to smack them around or whatever they got to do, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and I'm sure that Joe Dubuque probably has similar oh, yeah. access to Atticus, so I you know I really enjoy that part. I mean that you know, showing up and I really don't do much. I really don't have to act like I'm the, you know, I'm, that's just not my style. I'm just not there to be like, I'm the guy, I know all the stuff. Let's do this. Let me show some stuff. I'm not into that. So um, if they need me to show, show stuff or, or help, I will. But like, ultimately I like when other people are kind of taking the reins and working with my kids, I, f I feel better that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Joe, Joe and I joke we're like the third and fourth assistant of the youth team. <laughs> we like, we like awesome. let the dads. You're the volunteer. You're yeah, the volunteer no, assistant. Totally. We're, we're, we're like fourth in the pecking order, which Love is it. just fine by but us. There's nothing wrong with that. There's oh. nothing wrong with that. Oh. I think a lot of people struggle with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's like the biggest thing I think a lot of people letting go of control is the biggest. It's the first thing I think like. Yeah. And some huh. of the dads too, like, this is their thing, you know, like they got to do some, you know, they got to do like a business job during the day, you know, they, they, this is their time. Like they get, they really want to coach, you know? And so I'm like, go ahead, man. I'll just, I'll just chip in. Wait, no, they, they, no, we they love it. And so we like, let them go. It's cool. It's awesome. Jared, do you want to get into the cataclysmic events of the last couple <laughs> weeks of yeah. Ivy league and EIWA wrestling Eastern's wrestling, uh, of uh, I mean, who apparently thought, Coach Ayer's yeah. best friend, Rob Cole, leaving <laughs> and going to Stanford from Cornell. Well, let's go, let's go back a year ago, right? I mean, it's just crazy from a year ago to now, right? It's... <sighs> yeah. With Stanford dropping, you're saying? Yeah, Stanford, now you have Cole, right? Just, I guess, yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. What it, it, I, for, starting with Stanford dropping, are you kidding me? Like, oh, the, the amount of like disdain I have 
for that administration is 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 massive it's like you're gonna you're gonna use finances as the reason to drop what is it 11 programs i saw the one the greatest quote was the lawyer that was sort of defending the group recently i think he saved like the brown you know he's a very good lawyer he said he goes this is a joke basically them saying that it's a financial decision he goes i could go into the president's office and with the size of the endowment they have i could look through the cushions of his couch that I could find all the money I needed to, to run all these programs. And I just thought that was, that was so good. I mean, down their part. I mean, is it, was it smart on their part? I mean, now they're not, they don't have to foot the bill. You know I mean? The, in hindsight, I mean, it's extortion. I mean, like, no, yeah. totally extortion. It's what Arizona state did to Martori, right? Like they were like, Hey, we need this program. We don't really want to pay for it anymore. Are you going to, you're going to stroke a check. Okay. 10 million. All right, good. Here we go. We're good. Right. That's what they did. That's what the scares me is like, is that, is this going to become the model? Like this right, is I'm not this saying what, smart, this, but I mean, it, it, for them, I mean, what, what are they smart? out? Right. It's yeah. like loser smart. It's like, you're a jerk face. Right, 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 sure. right, right, right. Scumbag smart. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, I, I say uh, in, in administration and athletic departments, you have managers and then you have leaders, mm -hmm. managers right. move resources around, move people around and they don't really, inspire anyone and then you have leaders who are there for the core reason that college athletics exists is the student athletes right. and giving people the latitude to be leaders and then to lead their organizations i've been so lucky i've had two amazing ad's um, who, who did it for the right reasons and then i look at these guys and i'm like oh my god what a, what a what a what a joke of a, of a, what are you doing this for? Like you're, you're a manager of like how weak anyway. So I don't want to get into that too much. Uh, I could go off on some tangents there. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and God, I was happy though, when I, I thought it was over, I thought it's done. And then the one thing that was interesting was the trustees were going to meet about it. So then that was a little interesting. I thought, I don't know. I don't know if it was a plan all along to get the money. I don't think it was. I think they were really dropping programs. Um, but, you know, then the trustees had that meeting. And I was like, that's that's pretty interesting that they're going to publicly say the trustees are meeting on this because the president can say one thing, but the trustees, they're, they're the ones that have to okay things. Right. So that got me thinking, like, maybe there's a chance. Um, and then they said they're back. And so that was an amazing, amazing moment. I actually thought for sure, uh, I didn't think about it too much, but I was like, ah, Ray Blake's going to get the job. Then, then great when, human, by the way, no, great he's, dude, he's great awesome. guy, Ray Blake. I can't give you a better endorsement of a guy. Well, let's not forget about, you know, Jason Borelli for this whole thing too. Either. I mean, yeah. right? national yeah. champ and shit, right. And then she's a Pete's that he's gone he's going to American because he thinks it's over and then his program right. saved. Right. I mean, but go on, Ray Blake. You thought yeah, Ray so then Ray Blake, and then like he doesn't get it. And then and in my head, I'm like, of course he doesn't get it because these clowns, guys, these administrators are are peeved that you know he was they were out, you know, pushing he was pushing that, back. He was fighting, pushing back fight, fighting the good fight, you know. So um so then, yeah, then then they hire Rob, which was like, whoa, that's crazy. Um, and, you know, I don't know what to make of it. There's so much stuff out there right now about why did he leave and, you know, what's going to happen at Stanford. It's just such a it's such a roller coaster of things that, like, I, I, I'm curious as to what what the heck is going on in relation to that. And And it could be like so. You know, he'd been there for, for a long time. I don't know how many years. 27 years, I think. I could see, though. I could see being like, hey, like, I need something new, right? Like, I mean, that's a pretty long stint. And and by the way, like, he's done some pretty good stuff. <laughs> I mean, well, like. It's incredible. I mean, They've been runner up. He's had yeah. 10 national champs in the last 11 yeah. years, something crazy like that. I was reading the stats. It's, it's what that guy has done at an Ivy League institution is incredible and that's it's what pretty, i know that's what you strive for i know yeah, that yeah yeah i mean they set the tone i mean i appreciate cornell I, I mean you know it's like that expectation thing like i think we can win ncas call me freaking crazy why not if we went from zero wins to i think we were ranked as high as like fifth in 2020 at one point in the rankings i think we ended up 11th or 12th 
we went from 81st to fifth, why can't we be first? And so it just takes a few guys. So, and, and, and it ha has a lot to do with, I mean, even taking the job had a lot to do with Cornell. I mean, if no one else had done anything, if, 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 if no one had been doing anything like Cornell was doing when this job came up, would I have taken it? I don't know. So, but to Rob, it's like, I could see, I could see where he's coming from sort of getting a change after 27 years and saying like, Hey, um, and he could have been frustrated with like the COVID thing and Ivy leagues. And I think it was probably a lot of things, but um, yeah, I think he's going to do pretty good there. Unfortunately. Have you talked? <laughs> have you guys talked? Have you texted? Have you talked? Not after I talked to him a bit at U 23s when it was happening. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I could see where he's coming from with the move. Um, it's funny, like, so, so for the last like three years, I, I would just joke with them and be like, hey, you should retire. I mean, like, <laughs> you've been doing it. I swear to God, this is true. So I'd be like, you, you know, it's time. It's time. It's like, you've done a lot of good things. I was like, it's probably time to exit. So um, this isn't exactly what I was looking for. But, uh, but yeah, so pretty funny, though, that he did change. I, I, I really didn't expect that. Crazy. You awesome. mentioned U23s, right? You had a good showing out there. Yeah, it was great. We had the most All-Americans of all the RTCs, seven. Uh, we had a world team member. Uh, we were second. I thought we were first. So it's so funny. We were first until like the last match. So <laughs> I guess some Iowa guy won best of three. So I thought we won. I was like literally at the airport. And I'm like, <laughs> we won. We won. You know, and I had to tweet out. We won. And someone wrote like, who called hey, you out? Who called you out? I don't remember. It's probably someone from the Hawkeyes, you know, like, Hey, you guys, you guys know you were second, right? I was like, Oh shoot. I was like, I didn't know we were second. So, you know, we had to kind of scramble and get things at least a little bit right. But yeah, so it was Pat good. get on the team. Pat got on the team. Pat glory got on the team. Quincy Monday was in the finals. Um, that kid Rob from Nebraska, like he's good, man. He was good. really good. He was sneaky. Good. He stopped his attacks and he had a great front headlock freestyle and he's good on top um yeah i wish we knew a little more about him uh but he's good that kid's good and, and we, he shut quincy down so yeah it was good it was a great tournament uh considering the year we had you know we did the best we could with what we had and that was kind of like the culmination for us because we didn't have an nca tournament so uh, to know that a lot of hard work a lot of a lot a lot of sacrifice um you know to get to that point felt good uh, for us to get what we got jared i am i am good on overtime with coach i mean I, this has been awesome talking about triple you overtime. Your, your oh, triple this, overtime this, your meteoric rise has been awesome jared do you have anything else for him no this is great i'm glad we finally got to meet um only cool. thing i knew about prince and zeb uh our guy jimmy rusat his daughter i graduated kim i don't remember kim she she went to Princeton. And oh, our, our our accountant, the accountant. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, the only thing I know about Princeton. Princeton. that's the only thing I knew about Princeton. Yeah, you know, other than Clodzics and <laughs> yeah, so finally, it's great to meet you. But uh, yeah, gotta give the, a shout out to Kim. The yeah. best pair of sweatpants I own still <laughs> are the sweatpants he gave me on the 2008 visit. Those Jeez. I still got them, by the way. Rock them all the time. Hey, you need some new gear. I, I need some new sweatpants. I need some new a new hoodie. I know VA, that much. VA sweatpants. VA uh, sweatpants. That's true. Uh, but they got. I'm telling you right now, these Princeton ones I got, best yeah, pair of sweatpants I own. Nice. Those are pretty nice. It's pretty nice. You know ones I'm talking about too, don't you? The grays. Oh yeah. Oh, I know exactly. Great. Right? I still got them. Yep. Hey, yeah. so uh, give me your addresses. E email me. I'll send you guys some stuff. Coach, thank you for everything. Jared, give us the quick promo codes for yep. barbarian apparel we're gonna have these shirts coach nice these shirts you know barbarians NGRTC, online. right oh yeah i the, they do a great job NGRTC. they do an awesome they, job they, man. They yeah awesome job. yeah you work with them you know you know barbarian apparel they, they do awesome. RTC. Yeah, they, they've been they've been so good to us they've been great highly recommend yeah josh's awesome but yeah barbarian apparel.com slash ba hour they're doing uh they do a singlet special on there and um actually just got this in this is our little club here in town just got this today. So definitely. Eight. And then um, we got to start getting our guy, Josh, and he doesn't know much about social media. So we're trying to get our Josh to uh, get his social media going on Barbarian Apparel on Twitter. Follow Barbarian Apparel on Twitter. 
Follow them. Barbarian on- Wear, I think, is what the, the handle is on uh, Twitter. Barbarian Wear. Barbarian Wear. Okay. So uh, check them out Barbarian on Twitter. Affair. Check right. them out on Instagram. We got specials. They do uh, Coach Ayers' RTC, then NJRTC. Oh, you got the sweat activated shirts, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, we got those. Those are sweet. I wear I run those. I run on those. Yeah, they're good shirts. I think one of my guys stole mine, though. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I had it and it was gone. Oh, oh man, coach, thank you for the time. We're glad to have you on. Thank you for talking about what it took, you know, t- 10 years, right? Coach Rain just said 10 years. Ten years. He was right, wasn't he? Damn it. He was <laughs> right. He was right. Awesome, coach. Thanks, thank you coach. for the time. Stick around for a little bit, all right? Yeah, man. Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.